Okay, so in this video, I wanted to show you guys how having your tapered ball nose bit configured influences the way the cuts of the CNC actually happen. Uh, I made four sheets for this. I'm using Osage Orange for my plugs and Walnut for my pockets on my V carves. And I just made some simple squares to cut out so that we can do a cross section. So looking at our tool paths first on our walnut, the first path that I did was a V-carve inlay tool path. So for this, I did a regular start depth of zero millimeters and went six millimeters deep. But what I want you to see is that I have configured the tapered ball nose bit as a V bit at 10 and a half degrees. And I'm going full depth of cut on these, as you can see here in the tool configuration. So when we do that V carve with the inlay tool path, it of course makes a separate sheet with the backside inlay or the up plug. And we'll look at that here now. That's on our Osage page. And this is our V-carve inlay plug. And you'll see here we have a glue gap of 0.5, a surface gap of 1.5. And of course our pocket depth was still six. And again, we'll see that we're still configured our tapered ball nose as a V-bit, which is what the V-carve inlay tool path requires in order to be able to use it. It won't use engraving bits, it won't use uh, tapered ball nose bits like a regular V-carve tool path will. All right, next. I also did a second tool path with a regular V-carve inlay. Start depth of zero, flat depth of zero. And this time I configured as a tapered ball nose bit. As you see here, we're configured as a tapered ball nose bit and we're still going full depth with the same configurations. For our plug side, again, this time I did it a little bit different. I don't normally use these parameters, but I wanted to see what, what we would look like using a start depth of four millimeters and a flat depth of three and a half millimeters. Now keep in mind if you're using a CNC that's not very sturdy or you're using a, a option like a Makita router as opposed to a VFD spindle, you're probably not going to want to go with just a single tool path like this because it may be more than what your router can handle. I have a 1.5K VFD spindle, so mine has the capabilities to do this. On this, I'm again tapered as a tapered ball nose for my bit, and I'm going full depth of the cut. Then the third path that I did was a regular V-carve tool path. This time I did something a little bit different. I have the tapered ball nose bit configured as an engraving bit. And we're still going full depth with the same other parameters. Uh, changing between a ball no or tapered ball nose and in an engraving bit actually does change the fitment of the plug as you will see when we do the cuts. On our plug side, I'm again going full depth, but this time I'm gonna do it with a start depth of six millimeters and a flat depth of one and a half millimeters. This should give me about a half a millimeter to a millimeter, give or take, uh, of uh, glue gap 
I, I can tell you it'll give me about half a millimeter once there's actually glue in it and it's compressed under the under my press. Again, as we see, I'm configured as an engraving bit. As opposed to a tapered ball nose bit. So with those tool paths in mind, we'll go down to the CNC and get these cut. <laughs> I had to reconfigure my bit because I'm using the tapered boils first as a B bit and now as a tapered boils. Now I'm carving the plug side first using the V-Carve Inlay Toolpath and configured as a V-Bit for my uh, paper ball nose. And then the second path will be configured as using a paper ball nose as a paper ball nose.
Now I'm marking both the plug and the pocket sides with the V-carve inlay toolpath and the V-carve toolpath so that we can tell which was which when we fit the plugs after I take the plugs over to the table saw, or I'm sorry, the uh, bandsaw. Okay, so here we're going to fit our plugs to our pockets. First, the V-carve inlay tool path. You'll see that's a little bit loose. And now our normal V-carve tool path. And in this case, that's actually kind of a tight fit right on the get. final set of inlays going to be the uh, normal V-carve toolpath using a 6 inch or a 6 millimeter start depth and a 1.5 millimeter flat. And here's a scenario where it's nice to have uh, soft plastic hold downs as opposed to metal, which would have just completely destroyed my bit here. Starting on the left, we have the regular V-carve toolpath with the bit configured as an engraving bit. The middle is a V-carve inlay toolpath with the bit configured as an in, as a V-bit. And finally, on the right, we have a regular V-carve toolpath with the bit configured as a tapered ball nose bit. I wanted to take the opportunity to thank the creator Lone Oak Woodworks, who took the time to deep dive into correcting some of the parameters to improve his own V-carve inlays. His video is linked in the description. Please take a look and give him a follow. He does some excellent work. 
I plan to do another video breakdown of the V-carve inlay toolpath and my experiments to make it work better using tapered ball nose bits. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.